I'm farming about 400 acres here at the edge of Arklow. I've been farming mainly continuous cereals up until about seven years ago and uh, I've now introduced more break crops into rotation. Um, I'm using maize, oilseed rape and beans uh, as part of my rotation. Uh, the reason as well for that is to get better weed control, mainly grass weeds and other difficult weeds I had built up over time uh, over t too much uh, continuous cereals so this seems to be working well for me at the moment. Also I'm on my own most of the time and I've introduced mint hilling into my system. I was traditionally plough based and now I've become more mint hill because it's a huge time saving for me to be able to get out and cover ground quickly. So that also means that it's more challenging for weed control so I have to be careful about uh, the correct slots for different uh, rotational crops. Well an example now of a typical rotation for me would be spring beans followed by winter wheat followed by winter oilseed rape followed by winter wheat again and possibly then a bit of spring barley the following year the fifth year to make sure that sterile roam doesn't become a big issue to keep it clean. Beans or rape only appear one year in five in the rotation. Because I've been going down the mint hill route in the last couple of years I do notice that the grass weeds and the sterile brome for example are, be are becoming a bit of an issue and I'm concerned about that. Uh, it, it has happened in the past when I, I experimented with mint hill and I'm very much aware of the threat of brome getting out of control very quickly. So that's why this year rather than growing winter barley as my first crop after my breaks I've decided to go for more winter wheat as my first crop after breaks. Uh, historically I would have been getting very high yields of winter barley of four tons plus but this year because of the risk of brome grasses and perhaps not being able to get good control of them in the winter barley I, I, there is a better uh, chemistry available out there for controlling the bromes in the winter wheat. Oilseed rape is a great cleaning crop as are the beans uh, because if there is any risk of the build-up of these difficult weeds and difficult grasses, uh, the uh, graminicides that I'm using in the rape and the beans is very effective at taking them out. I wouldn't like to see winter barley completely disappearing out of my rotation because of the benefits of spreading the workload, but uh, I have to be very careful with it because I've gone more from intail. The build-up of brome could be very rapid. Uh, it hasn't been an issue in the past because I've been more plough based but now that I've more mint hill based it could be a big issue. So I'd hope still to be able to try some winter barley as a first slot after the break crop. Might be the, might be the best place to put it uh, but I'd be very vigilant to ensure that if brome suddenly took off I'd have to switch, it back, switch back to wheat as my first choice after the break crop. So some of the lighter land would typically be more suitable for winter barley as well because winter wheat would tend to burn up a bit in a dry summer. Uh, drought can be an issue on quite a bit of the farm here so I just have to balance my decision making in the future. I grow quite a bit of maize on contract for dairy farmers in the area and I've had to, uh, that was great for the first few years, it was probably one of the best highest margin achieving crops on my, on my farm. So I've had to stop growing that at home on my home farm because it's been driving the wild oats mad under the plastic. So uh, now I tend to grow the maize on rented land that I know is clean of and free of wild oats because it's just uh, a recipe for disaster on land that has wild oats. It'll drive it out of control. Apart from getting better grass weed control, I find that uh, growing more break crops actually spreads the workload for me from the start of the drilling season I can be drilling in August late August uh, with the oilseed rape for example and then into the winter cereals in October and that's uh, hopefully finished by the end of October and uh, then the spring beans will be probably February March time and then spring barley on uh, after that then in April. Another positive about the uh, rotations in the in the mix is that it broadens the harvest period and it's not concentrated into a short period. Uh, for example this year uh, the oilseed rape was cut in mid-July in good weather 
and then we had disastrous weather in August and uh, it was difficult to get crops cut in August. So um, it, it's just an advantage, an example of spreading the workload and how important that is so that if the weather does get very bad you haven't got too much exposure to a very large acreage of crops ripening in a short window as hap would have happened in August this year. Uh, so uh, the other thing is I have more time to spend with my family because uh, I'm not working all night and all day. I've got more time to um, go to football matches with them and uh, enjoy better work-life balance, which is very important. I've noticed too after uh, oilseed rape and beans uh, and maize that the soil structure is very much improved and uh, lovely and crumbly and friable. So that's an obvious benefit of having the crops in the rotation. I'm very tuned into integrated pest management and practicing it in so far as I can as much as possible on the farm. Uh, for example, um, the delaying in sowing and the creation of stale seed beds for min tilling to uh, get good grass weed control um, is very important. So um, I'm doing the very best I can to ensure that I'm ticking that box. I'm farming with my brothers Francis and Stephen. We're tillage farmers. We're, we're growing approximately 2,000 acres between us. And we're growing a range of crops. I'd say rape, winter wheat, winter barley, oats, beans and spring barley. The key benefits of a crop rotation on our farm is controlling grass weeds, maximizing the profits and spreading the workload. The grass weed problems on our farm is brome and wild oats. Growing continuous spring barley and dairy worries us as we only have one active ingredient to control the wild oats. Growing other crops allows us to use other active ingredients to control wild oats on our farm. We use uh, oilseed rape, beans and wheat to control brome species. Having spring crops in our rotation helps to control brome species. We use Olympian Robin to create stale seed beds and with delay drilling for the controlled brome species. The advantage of the crop rotation of our farm gives us a great chance to maximise the use of machinery. Example is the combine. We are harvesting 2,000 acres with one combine each year, starting approximately on the 20th of July with winter barley and finishing in the last week of September with beans. High yields of winter wheat couldn't be achieved without a good rotation. Crops like oilseed rape and beans brings life back into the soil. Crop rotation is playing an increasing role on, on tillage farms in Ireland. But, but we use rotation to improve the sustainability of crop production and probably the most important part of that is economic sustainability. By its nature with rotation we bring in break crops. They can be cereal breaks like oats but more typically I suppose they're crops like beans or oilseed rape, a different crop, crop type into the rotation. And that brings benefits to the subsequent crop. Okay, and that benefit is, is usually a yield benefit. And in our work here, in older work on the systems trial, we're getting an extra 1.1 tonnes per hectare on average to a following cereal crop compared to a non-rotation scenario. Here, in more, more recent years, the benefit is great, that we're measuring is greater. We're measuring about 1.6 tonnes per hectare, or about 16% extra yield in the subsequent crop. But that's not what's important. What's important is the, the, the profitability of the entire rotation. So we've seen here when we do the analysis that when you compare a five-year rotation, comparing that with continuous monoculture of cereals, that we see the monetary benefit each year of that five-year rotation is between 100 and 200 euros per hectare more than compared to continuous cereal rotation. And benefits of that size cannot be ignored.